What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Fit, Healthy, and as always, most of all, happy podcast. I am your coach and host, Josh, here with his co host and co coach, KG, and I'm in the house. And it is Motivation Monday. We are here to get you fired up. We just want to say thank you for all the support lately. It's been awesome to see the podcast growing, to hear about how impactful a lot of the episodes have been, and how many people took us up on our test group offer. It's been absolutely amazing already getting those individuals progress, seeing them move forward. So it seems like people are fired up right now, and I'm guessing you're fired up as well. If you're listening to this podcast, you're tuning in, and we have some amazing content, some really exciting questions today. So without further ado, let's Let's jump into it with Coach Kyle's quote. And jumping into it on this beautiful Motivation Monday, my quote for this week is, exercise not only changes your body, it changes your mind, your attitude, and your mood. And I just really like this one because of course we all want to have a better physique and just create something that we're super proud of. But I think it's so amazing when we start to look at exercise as something that just helps improve every area of our life, like not only our physique. And I know so many of you use it as an outlet to just release stress and to just feel better and to just work on your mindset and all that great stuff. And I just, I've gotten to a point where I'm so focused on exercise and like just focused on it as something that's going to improve every single area of my life. And I know a lot of our clients and just people who start to see great success when they start to transition that thought of just like, Hey, I'm just going to go for a walk to feel good, to relieve some stress, to, you know, just improve my mood, to increase energy. And when you start to look at all the benefits that exercise holds, like there's a reason they say exercise is number one in terms of just everything like making you feel absolutely incredible so just small thing to think about something that was on the top of my head and hopefully this helped you in some way or another yeah and i'm really happy i started exercising because we always talk about choosing your heart and the gym is such a good simulation of struggle of course we have to struggle in life but by going through these micro struggles of a really hard set of a hard last rep of getting yourself to the gym this builds discipline it builds willpower and we've spoken to this before being a diligent person in the gym can make you stronger in other areas. Perhaps you're struggling to finish studying, and get that done. You can take that willpower and that ability from the gym and kind of use it there. And it's amazing how it does carry over so much more than just looking good because that's what most people attribute it to. But it's amazing the just the ripples a good fitness, nutrition, health habit can have and how many other areas of your life it can actually make you feel better and build you up. So I always remind myself this too because it's easy to think, oh, it's just a workout. It's not a big deal but it's amazing if you actually think of how much your mind and just your attitude towards yourself and also learning that you can do things that you can be strong that you can be consistent that you can see change like if you're like wow i've seen my body change perhaps you'll have more hope to see your career change if that's something you're looking to do so really really excellent quote there and we'll go ahead and jump into mine uh this is by alex ramosi i really like his content it's really solid and when i saw this quote I thought, wow, I really need to share this because I speak a lot about this with Kyle personally and it's something I really believe in. And the quote is, I promise you there is someone who's had it worse and has done it better. And I've gone off lately about not entertaining excuses and how in the past there's always someone with a bigger excuse. So someone will say, hey, you have it easy because you're not 50. And then someone will say, well, I'm 50 and I have four kids. And then someone will say, well, I'm 180 and I have 80 kids. And like, it's like this war of like, who can have the biggest excuse? Who can find the reason why they're not succeeding? Like who can really make their excuse sound the best? And the truth is excuses only sound best to the person who's making them. And if you look at people, like even there's a group I follow, I, I forget where it is. It's a spot in Africa, but they made these the sick gym out of like these concrete weights and like wood. Like it's actually insane. They work out outside with flies buzzing around and stuff and they're D's. Like they're getting after it. They probably have way less access to like good quality food, protein, uh, just sanitary gym opportunities and they're out there getting it done. There's people who are missing limbs that I've spoken of. There's people that have really tough situations. There's professionals who find ways to get it done and there's people who really put their professional life over their own physical life so even for me like when I think any way I'm hard done by or my situation is harder than someone else's like the second you start comparing it's a losing battle because you can either decide to compare to someone who's doing worse than you or you can compare to someone who has it worse and is still doing better and when you look for people like that it can be inspiring because you realize I can do it too and there's no excuse that's too big for me to get over so I really just thought this quote was powerful and it's something I remind myself when I want to entertain my excuses because it really makes me realize there's no nobility in that and instead look for those solutions so the cup can either be half empty reasons why you can't do something or it can 
can be half full. You can find reasons to succeed, reasons to improve. And I think this quote really highlights that. So once again, it's I promise you there is someone who's had it worse and has done it better. I honestly love that. And I just, I use it a lot as well. And I always like just thinking of these types of things because it is, it's just so motivating when you actually like spend a few seconds to think about other people's situations and just seeing other people get it done. Like I get honestly so motivated and just jumping into some client shout outs and stuff early, just like having these conversations, seeing all these amazing people post their what they overcome in the Facebook group and our community and just having these conversations with our clients and our success stories like it honestly is so inspiring and that's why we love just sharing these types of things and just working with all these awesome people because like they're always overcoming these obstacles these things that are in front of them and it's just it's it's honestly really inspiring so if you are a client of ours if you have been a client of ours like huge shout out to you just one thing I wanted to share like you're absolutely awesome and even if you're not still if you are putting in that work if you are are just just overcoming whatever it is like that mindset barrier that physical barrier like whatever it is maybe that emotional barrier you're awesome and uh, just keep plugging away keep doing these great things and uh, you'll start to see well you will continue to see incredible success and results all right we'll jump into our thoughts for this week and I saw this in a newsletter and I thought it was awesome. So Chris Williamson, he does like a Monday newsletter. We also do a Monday newsletter. We are inspired from him. So Kyle takes time to go ahead and showcase some of our favorite quotes, what's been going on, any excellent content we have, any high level tips or thoughts. So if you want to check that out, you can just message us on Instagram. We'll get you in that. And it's absolutely awesome, totally free. And uh, once again, there's a lot of people that will kind of do these weekly roundups of their information. I think it's a fantastic way to go about it. But he had mentioned that your training session is the average of the five closest machine users in the gym you're at. And what I liked about this, I don't think it's entirely true, but uh, you've heard us talk before about the rule of five and how you become a version of your five friends. So if you look at someone's five closest friends and you see their fitness level, their finance level, what they like and dislike, you'll get an idea of what that person will be. Just the same, like if you're someone who has five super fit friends, there's a really good chance you'll be really fit. And what I liked about this is I've been to gyms where it's just not the gym to be at. Like no one's really doing anything. Everyone's on their phone. The music's quiet. There's no atmosphere there. And it, it makes it really hard to train. Like I'm not going to lie. It makes it super, super hard to train. Just the same. Like I have a fantastic home gym. I don't use it a ton because I like being around other people, getting it and seeing other people in tough situations, finding a way to get it done, seeing someone grind through a set, seeing someone hit a PR. Like to me, that's very motivating and fueling. So it's really important you are in the right gym. I don't think it's the end of the world if you're like the most jack or people in there aren't super fit. But his example was he goes to a commercial gym during the week, but on the weekend he goes to the gym where all the pro bodybuilders, the craziest, most elite of the elite are at. And to me, I think that is a good mantra. Like being in a gym that's a little bit uncomfortable where people are a little bit more elite, they're a little bit more ahead because it'll stretch your horizon to what's possible. Whereas if you're in a gym where not much is going on, it's not really the atmosphere and the place you want to be and people aren't progressing, you'll kind of level out to that, I think. So it is always motivating and maybe you have no option but to be in that gym, but follow people that inspire you that are growing, that are changing, that are progressing. And I think that can be very powerful. And even me, I experiment kind of with where I like to work out because I know there's some gyms that are no good and they just don't really fire me up and make me feel great. So if you have the opportunity to try different gyms, I always recommend it. I know a lot of people just sign up somewhere and they never try anything else, but being in the right atmosphere is just so powerful. Like even going from like a really like a Planet Fitness, like a Gold's Gym in LA or Cali or wherever, like it, it's really motivating. Like it's going to be a very different atmosphere, but you also may be someone who hates that. You may hate busy gyms. You may hate people grunting and hitting crazy weights and whatever, and that may not motivate you. And you may work best in silence in the basement where you can be focused and have all the equipment you need and have no distractions. And if that's the case, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying one's better than the other. Like you should lean into that and you can start building out a home gym, avoid distractions. So being in the right gym is an extra little bonus tip. And it's just something that was kind of uh, on my mind. Yeah. And it's honestly really important to ask yourself the question and start to know yourself a little bit more with these situations. Like let's say there's a gym that is two minutes from you. You're able to go there because you're able to walk. You're able to be super consistent, but your workouts are just not as high quality. They don't have the equipment you want. Like it's just not as ideal. Whereas that like 10 minute drive might be like the perfect situation, but you also might have that obstacle of getting there. And I think a lot of people would choose that better gym, that better situation and just better results in that other space if they have to drive a little bit. But it's also very important to know 
know, like depending on who you are, what your time constraints are like, you know, if you and how many kids you got, like what your work situation is. But I always challenge people to kind of do that little bit of an uncomfortable thing. Like my clients who have, I uh, have encouraged them to level up to a different gym. Like they have never looked back. Like when we weren't able to use a barbell at a specific place or when all the machines were taken. So more of the story is just like challenge, like what you always kind of were comfortable with and see if there's a different option for you. Um, and uh, also a lot of the times, if you start to get better results, like it's a no brainer that that different situation is going to be better for you. Like, of course, a home gym is awesome. Some people love it. Some people get great success. Like that's totally cool. But if you're someone who's just like, man, I'm just, I'm missing that extra edge. I just, I want to step better of my comfort zone here. Hey, take that leap, like try it out. See if it's for you. Some things are for you. Some things aren't, but give it a shot. You never know until you try, right? Any other uh, thoughts or anything you want to jump on? Yeah, something uh, I was thinking of like, and this is going to be tough for some people to hear. <laughs> I, I love talking to people, hearing about their goals, hearing about what's going on. Maybe people from high school, just whatever it is, you always see people around. And my big thing to challenge you with, like, I feel like sometimes people know more about other people's lives than they do their own. So you have to hear me out. Like, I love goal setting. I love focusing on what I'm doing, my fitness goals, just like every part of my life. And I'm very strict on it. I set monthly goals. I set uh, yearly goals all that great stuff. And I find a lot of times people will be so caught up in like what's going on between specific uh, characters online, maybe movie stars, maybe uh, elite athletes and stuff like that. Like, don't get me wrong. I love watching F1 and just keeping track of what's going on there. But the main thing I wanted to just encourage you is to sit down with yourself and to focus on what it is in your life you're trying to improve, how you're trying to get better. It is nice to look up to these people, but <laughs> honestly, like they're just regular human beings who, uh, you know, just it, once again, I look up to some people as well, but I just really wanted to remind you, like set your own goals, have your own ambitions. Like if you're having a conversation with someone and all you're talking about is the stats of this one other person, but you haven't set your own goals or you ha don't have your own stats, I want to challenge you with that. So build your own life, something that you're super proud of, set those goals, reach them like it is nice to see these other people crush it but at the same time you should be doing the same and uh that's really the only thought i had on the top of my head that i'm super passionate about yeah i think it's awesome to like like sports teams and have things to follow and whatnot but you do definitely want to be careful with getting too into it because i like kyle said i really like bedros as one other speaker he mentioned how like a lot of men will be able to tell you every stat every point, every detail of a sports team, but they won't know what their kid had for lunch. And I was like, wow, like that's that's pretty crazy, right? And it is important, I believe, to put your energy in the right things. I think there's nothing wrong with having passions and enjoying things. And if you love stats and you have a sport that you just love and you're still getting done what you need to get done, that's absolutely awesome as well. But I do think it's a really good reminder, like Kyle said too, to even just be aware of your own situation. Like I've always uh, joked too that I don't like wearing jerseys with other people's last name because I want to wear my own last name. I want to be proud of myself and do things and see change and achievements of my own. And I think it's a good reminder too that you can kind of be that own hero. You should idolize yourself, not in a vain way, but in a sense that you're actually proud of your achievement, that you're progressing, that you're actually spending time and effort. Because if we spend all this effort in other things and we neglect ourselves because of it or our loved ones, like we're kind of going about it the wrong way. And it's so easy to just consume and just watch vlogs and be all these things and do these things. And these people are awesome too, but they're just human beings like you. And it's really important to go out and make your own experiences, I guess is a big thing. Yeah. And like the main thing is I don't want to like discredit and put down if you have a team and if you have these things, like we love going out once a month, whenever these big UFC events go on, we know so much, we watch the embedded. It's a great experience, but we're still focusing on our own goals and our own thing. And like what I'm trying to get at is there's sometimes like people who will know every football stat, but they have zero stats of their own. Like just what, what what's your personal record? Like how much success have you seen in the gym? Like what about these relations? Like, you know so much more about these other people than your own life. And it's just, it's a small thing that I just, I wanted to get you to think about. Some people are absolutely crushing it with this. Some people I think can definitely improve, but that's my last little uh, rant for that subject for today. All right. So those are our random thoughts and let's jump into the uh, client shout out of the week. So who do we got? So this week we have Rick and he came to me and he said, I want to be in the best shape 
ever possible by 50 years old. And I mean, also he wanted to inspire those around him, especially his uh, his children, which he absolutely has been able to do. But if you are watching on YouTube, you can see the photos, the transformation, what he's accomplished, how far he's come. And it is just honestly so inspiring. You can also click down below and check it out on Instagram. We posted his transformation with some great tips, feedback, all that other great stuff. But it is absolutely phenomenal to see Rick turn 50 and just do some incredible things, especially getting those abs to pop and just finally seeing and feeling comfortable and just happy with everything that he's built up. And like, what I love about it is his kids are starting to follow suit. He's going into the gym with them now. They start to see him work out. You know, he sent me videos of his kids and his kids' friends doing the same type of stuff. And it is honestly absolutely incredible. But past that, like the the impact that he's had on others, just seeing him so happy and just build this, this amazing physique that he's super proud of uh, day in and day out. I'm just super honored uh, to have been able to work with them and just to still work with them and do some incredible things. And it really gets me to think like there's so much potential that all these people have. Like Rick was working out, he was trying some things and he just wasn't seeing the success that he wanted. And that's why right now we are offering an amazing opportunity for three people who want to just get shredded, who want to lose body fat, who want to just you know, so many people work hard, but they just don't see the results that they're striving for. And I see this in a lot of messages that we get on Instagram. So if you are looking to go from good to great, you know, just start to see some abs, become more chiseled, more shredded, and just be super happy, you know, lose anywhere between 10 and 30 pounds. We will absolutely take care of you. All you have to do is send us a message with the keyword shredded to our Instagram at Colossus Fit, C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S-F-I-T. And we can't wait to help three of you awesome individuals. There's that quote, and I forget what it is, but it's like, if you want me to cut down a tree, I'll spend the first six hours or three hours, whatever it is, sharpening the saw. Because if you're sitting there with a dull, like, or a dull ax, rather, not a saw or whatever you're using, it's not going to come down. You can work hard. You could work for three days. Kyle could come out with a chainsaw and get it done in 10 seconds. And it's the same with fitness. If you go about nutrition the wrong way and you're focusing on the wrong things, you're bulking wrong, you're cutting wrong, you're restricting, you're creating bad habits, you can actually do a lot of harm. You can actually put on more fat, lose muscle, not be in a good spot. Same with the wrong gym routine. You can overdevelop areas that don't need developing. You can put yourself behind in your potential of strength, ability, and understanding to really build a well-rounded, strong physique. You can be accountable to unhealthy patterns that can stick around. So instead, by optimizing these things and going about it right, it can be like that chainsaw. And that's why we can guarantee five times better results. And that's why we really, really push for people to invest in themselves because oftentimes taking that away from your own thought, we're emotionally invested and you're like, oh, should I balk? Should I cut? Should I do this? Do I need to do more or less? It can be really tough. But when you have a coach to really look at your life, look at your situation, see your physique and guide you through that, you become unstoppable. So don't miss out on this. If you haven't taken advantage, this is your chance. Once again, Instagram, DM, just message us there at Colossus Fit with the keyword shredded. And we look forward to taking care of you. Yeah. And honestly, like just from speaking to so many of you great people, like I'd say every few conversations, we get that message saying, I work hard in the gym. I work hard here, but I'm not seeing the results that I strive for. And I've heard this hundreds and hundreds of times. And like you're putting in that work, you, you're you showing up consistently. You should be seeing those results. You should be feeling your best, losing that body fat, getting to that next level. And honestly, just the accountability and having an actual game plan, like those are the two big things that we take a look at and we help you out with that can instantly change everything. So don't hesitate. We can't wait to help some of you awesome people. And that's all I have to say within the client shout out and our special promotion for today. All right, now we're going to jump into our mailbag and answer your questions. And the first one we have is how can you boost your metabolism? So I love this question because I haven't really thought of metabolism in a while, but I know it's been getting a little more trendy. And like metabolism is just a fancy way of saying how your body burns energy and for your body to be more efficient. So effectively, so you can eat more food and not have it be transpired as fat, have more energy, be in a good place and really have a fit, healthy and active body that can actually work through calories, build muscle and work optimally in terms of like thermo effective food and all these things. And the honest answer, instead of getting in the weeds with this, is just living a healthy lifestyle. So lifting weights heavy, aiming to eat better foods, getting sleep, staying hydrated. In fact, actually, I was doing some additional research on this and actually drinking water can temporarily increase your metabolism by 30% as opposed to being dehydrated. So like, don't underestimate the power of hydration. If you're slacking on your water, this is your motivation to get back to it. Even for me, like just keeping a water nearby, you'll be thirsty, you'll have an itch for it, you can grab it, you can have 
have it. It makes it nice and easy and you really cannot go wrong. So really looking at these big factor things is what will make the most change and any little gimmicks of eating certain foods or certain things like that, they're not going to be as powerful as just creating healthy habits. Of course, there are some foods that will actually have better like thermogenesis, like protein in particular with the thermic effect of food. Protein is actually more satisfying than like a carb. It'll have more power in the sense it'll help you maintain muscle, put on muscle. Like protein is a very powerful nutrient. So one of the easiest ways to do that is to actually do this. And then my other big thing is just sleep. Like by making sure you're getting as much sleep as possible, you'll put your body in the best state possible to be its most effective and beneficial self. And really anything that's gonna suppress hormones is what will really eat your metabolism. So excessive drinking, bad sleep habits, excessive stress, the more you can mitigate these factors the better off you will be and uh, those are kind of my big tips some people really get in the weeds with this but it's more so a thematic change that will really power you up to have a good metabolism like i don't do anything specifically i just do these big things well and we're really big on mastering big complex uh big concepts sorry in a very simple way so that is how i'd go ahead and approach this question I think that's where a lot of people struggle is they just, they, they come up with these questions and these thoughts. And even back when I started within fitness, like I heard it a lot more, luckily it's not as popular right now, but I still see so many people talking about this type of stuff. And like, you know, you see individuals just trying to have six to eight specific meals a day to try to keep their metabolism going. They try to, you know, stop eating at a certain time to help with that stuff as well. And like what Josh said was so true. It's just, it's a bigger picture thing. And like, for anything, just simply trying to be healthier and just live a healthy lifestyle alone. Like when you think like it'll help you with fat loss, it'll help you feel better. It'll help you with your metabolism and help you with confidence. Like just being a healthy individual for most of the time will help a ton. Like similar to what he said there, I'm not sitting there day to day thinking, man, I need to speed up this metabolism. Like I just, it, it's just making the right decisions. It's about eating that protein. We just had an amazing lunch. Like those are the types of things like between that and the water and just the overall health side of things that's just going to help you be in such a better position and uh yeah there's really no rocket science here but it is something to think about for sure and hopefully that helped you out yep and now into our second question i guess this kind of adds on to the first one quite nicely so i'm excited to share this one here is what are your top tips for me to be more active during the day i feel like i sit too much yeah a really good question like my t top two tips i'd say the first thing is just to incorporate it into your lifestyle, right? And the way that I look at it is like, I'm never thinking, man, I need to be more active. I need to move more. It's just, I kind of just incorporate it in between like having some sports teams that I'm a part of, just like walking my dogs, just like, I don't really think about the workouts that we're doing. It's just, it's kind of in there essentially. But I would say past that, like if you do sit a lot and if you do struggle with building up that habit, really taking a second to like plan it out. And so this really helped me at first, especially when I was, kind of just looking to build all these habits, I would always put it into the calendar and and schedule it in, right? So if you are someone who sits a lot, if you have these reminders pop up on your phone, if you use Google Calendar and you see, oh, I've got to go for a 30 minute walk between three and 3.30, you know that that's going to be a break. That's awesome. Like you can start to incorporate these things in. And I find when you have that calendar, when you have that, I guess you could say accountability within that, it'll honestly help a lot. Um, even I know some of my clients who will work out at lunch, who will go for walks at lunch. Like there's a lot of different ways between getting up a little bit earlier and going for a walk between maybe your lunchtime after work, maybe before bed. And I think you just kind of have to, look for these like reasons to get out there and to exercise and when you do need that accountability once again the reminders those types of things like if you have something pop up on your phone saying hey well stand up and you have to do a lap around the office or whatever your situation is it's hard to say because i know everyone's situation so different but these are some things that i'd personally recommend that would help me out and hopefully would help you out as well yeah, those are all great tips for me, like in terms of activity, I find even just like getting some kind of tracker, if you know you're not walking enough or you're unsure, like having a step tracker, your phone can also do it. Sometimes looking, realizing you're behind can really be a great source of awareness to help you improve it. Some other tips I like are I like parking a little bit further away. It's a bonus because I feel like no one's going to hit my car. Although ironically, I swear you could park so far and someone will always come park right beside you. But it's just an extra way to get some extra steps. Even more than that, I try to walk places as much as I can. So even like I'm lucky I have grocery stores close to me. So oftentimes when I don't need to get too, too much stuff, I'll walk over there, enjoy some activity and some steps from that. And the more you can walk, the better 
better off you'll be. That's probably my biggest hap. I like a morning walk. I'll usually go mid-afternoon. I'll usually do a night one as well. It's just something I enjoy. Whether it's talking with someone, having an audiobook in, it's just a great opportunity. Obviously, having a dog is good motivation to get them out there. They'll benefit from it. You'll benefit from it. You really cannot go wrong. Past that, like having activities and finding activities that will be best for you is the easiest way to work that in. So obviously, playing a sport, going hiking with a friend, like any way you can make it kind of less effort based and like if you're on a stairmaster for 30 minutes it's going to be very tiring where if you're playing soccer with your friends you might play for three hours get absolutely exhausted but enjoy every second of it because it's that gamification of that activity so those are some really good tips as well Another big tip I have for this is just to be out more. Like uh, we've always said, me and Kyle, that nothing good happens at your house. It's the same thing, same people. So being out is exciting. You have an opportunity to meet new people, to see new things, like find reasons to get out, to move around, to be sitting less. Even for me, I really try to minimize my sitting. If anything, I'll try and lay down. Like when I read or anything like that, like we're just in that position so much. I try to work against it, try to stand whenever I can, like, just doing these small things I find will lead to massive, massive results. And it doesn't need to be rocket science, but just working these small things throughout the day will give you a huge advantage. Yeah, and even just working off of that, like I like what Josh said about the the leagues and just all that other stuff. And even just what I was thinking of is like our friend who was uh, super busy and you could tell he just wanted to work. He had a lot to get done because he joined a volleyball league. It kind of forced him to be there. It's like, hey, I'm paying for this. My team's depending on me. So it's like there's some times where I know some people want to choose to do something different, maybe work or just watch a show or whatever. But when you have these things that kind of like force you to as well, it could be some great accountability. But I know last week I was talking about like how bonding for some people could be dinners, drinks, whatever. One of my favorite things to do is have bonding with friends through activities. And that's where I think a lot of people could potentially improve is just setting up these different things. Like when Josh and I are hanging out, a lot of the times we'll, have, we'll like to go out to do, do these fun things, but uh, like in terms of, you know, watching UFC or birthday parties or whatever, but also it's like ac surrounded around activities. And I think a lot of people just, they're not used to saying, Hey, do you want to go for a walk to a friend? Or do you want to go for a bike ride or a hike or go join this league or try to do this sport? But I'd say one of the best things you can do as a busy, busy individual, as someone who maybe is trying to learn to move a bit more and trying to enjoy these things is just bond with friends, maybe on the weekend or at night, or even just going and asking your significant other or your friends to go for a walk after dinner. Like there's so many different things, but I'd say just adding that in will help a ton. And that's my last thing on that subject as well. All right, last but not least, we have what are your top tips to avoid cravings? Yeah, another great question and something I, uh, I'm always working on. Um, I will say the first thing for me is just not keeping anything in the house. Uh, I just find like our willpower is so infinite and I mean like especially during the day it just it gets drained right so in the morning typically let's say I have uh, a ton of sweets and a ton of things inside the house I don't care for it at all I've got my Greek yogurt I'm nice and full um, you know lunchtime pretty similar but as the day goes on and you become more tired and especially for some people having to deal with more stress and just life kind of getting to you it's like a gas tank it's just going to be pretty much on empty by the end of the day based off of your typical situation. Now, as soon as you're walking past those cupboards and those things in front of you, that's gonna be something that's just gonna, It's even if you're not craving something, you're just always gonna want it. Like, let's get real, at least that's how I am, and that's something that I'd say a lot of people struggle with as well. So that's gonna be my first tip. But past that is just like really trying to switch the cue. So what I mean by this is we all have a feeling there's something going on inside our brain that says, hey, I'm craving a little bit of chocolate, I'm craving something else. When we start to notice this, I get, yeah, this, this reminder saying, Hey Kyle, you know, it'd be nice to have a little bit of something. We start to try to take it, take a look at that and switch it up a bit. Okay. You know what? I'm going to chug an entire glass of water and see how that goes. I'm going to have a sparkling water and just go from there. Maybe some carrots. I know Josh likes keeping those little veggies in his house as well. And that, that honestly is something that he likes to snack on. That could be another thing that you could switch up. So I'd say paying attention to when you get these cues, when you get these cravings and just trying to switch the habit out instead of 
instead of just giving in consistently will help a ton. So between that, not keeping stuff inside the house. Um, and then my other honest answer is that if I do have a specific craving, instead of just pushing it off and brushing it off until next week and until my diet's done, like sometimes I'll give in. I'll say, you know what? I've got a little bit of uh, leeway for 200 calories. I might just have a chocolate bar. And then the next day life goes on and we're good to go. And I think some people struggle because they have zero flexibility and you have to just know yourself. Like when people open that floodgate and that door of just, I'm going to enjoy some sweets, they could go off the deep end and keep going. And then when some people just fully restrict, then they get worse as well. So it's about knowing how you react to things, paying attention to that, being aware, but yeah, uh, that's all I got. And hopefully that helps you in some way or another. Some amazing tips here. And I, I really don't have too much more to add on to that. My biggest thing too, and like one thing I love from Jocko's book, uh, Discipline Over Motivation, um, or no, what was it? Discipline equals freedom. Discipline equals freedom. That's the one. His big thing was if you're in a really tough situation too, like we don't really need food. We get hungry because our body, when we have food, we want more of it. But it's amazing. You can go like a ridiculous amount of time without eating, like weeks, as long as you have water. Don't do that. That's not healthy. I'm not advising that. But oftentimes we'll say, oh my gosh, I'm starving. I'm in an airport, haven't had food for two hours. I have a two hour flight, so I'm going to die if I don't eat in these four hours. His whole thing is like, if there's nothing good available, just don't eat. And oftentimes too, like me especially, I love food. I'm a foodie. And like, if I'm feeling down, I'll want food. And I'll say, I want this to make me feel better. And even for me, just having the awareness to know I don't actually want food. And instead, like, I just want to feel better. So I'll go on a walk, I'll read a book, I'll do something more nourishing, as opposed to doing something where I do that, then I feel bad that I deviated from my plan, I feel worse, next day I feel sluggish and overfed and bloated in my face. It just, it does me no good. So I think even be able to recognize that and say I don't really need anything, and like Kyle said, using a bridge for that, or even just enjoying having that break or enjoying an activity or doing something else, I think it's all that application, understanding of energy. And if I'm in a situation too, where like I'm craving something, I'll say, do I really need this? Or do I really want it? Like there's time there's just cake around. You're just like, oh, this will feel good for two seconds. But you're like, I don't even really like cake. I'm not in the mood for cake. Like just not something I want. I think it's good to be real with yourself with that. And it's like a muscle. The more you can overcome like succumbing to cravings and things like that, the better off you are. And sometimes too, when I crave something, I'll say, okay, I'll have it tomorrow then. Like I'm done my calories. I really want a chocolate bar. I'll fit it in tomorrow and I'll have it tomorrow if I want it. The next day comes nine out of 10 times. I don't want it. And if I do, I can work that in because I have that 80-20 rule. So I think that's a lot healthier way to go about it. You should be able to have foods you like and enjoy them too without being restrictive. So those are my top tips and I find it can make a big difference. Yeah, and I think honestly, just being aware of like what a craving's coming from, like where the is a craving coming from? And there could be a million different answers here. A lot of times it's boredom. Sometimes it's just seeing a friend have something specific. Sometimes if we're driving past something and we think, oh, I need it. And just being fully aware of like what's going on actually I think can help so many people understand themselves more. I think a lot of times people struggle on their journey because they give in to every single temptation and every single craving. Like we were actually driving home. Uh, I don't remember what we were doing, but uh, just paying attention to the stores around us and looking and we're like, holy, it is incredible at how many unhealthy, just like uh, things that just, they, they kind of scream at you. They just, they stick out to you, drive past Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, well, not for us, but it was um, Krispy Kreme Donuts. It smells so good. Like, you know, you see McDonald's, you see the big line there, you see someone enjoying some sort of food. Like a lot of times cravings just come from a bunch of, I guess, randomness as well. And I think paying attention to like what is actually going on. Like, I think the time that I like to give into a craving is when I'm actually genuinely looking forward to something. It's coming from like me wanting a food that I haven't had in a while that's going to still, you know, just help me in a way, in some way or another, not put me, push me back from my goals, not, you know, just leave me satisfied for two seconds, but something that's just going to help me. And in some ways, if I do have something, I find that it helps me push forward because I'm like, Hey, I got that out of the way. I enjoyed it. It fit my macros onto the next day. I don't need anything for a while. So I think it's very important to pay attention to that because most people have no idea what's going on and what's how the brain's working and just like any triggers around them. And, uh, yeah, that's the last thing I have to say for that. And hopefully that helps you as well. So fantastic episode, some really fun questions. If you would like to submit a question, please feel free to message us on Instagram. I think that's the best way to submit it. We'd love to answer it here. If you're thinking it, other people are too. And we love a wide variety and just different kind of 
options of questions so you can hear us kind of think through them on different angles and hopefully ultimately get you a better understanding so you can progress faster and become fitter, healthier, and happier. If you love our podcast as well, we haven't asked in a while, but if you could take some time to leave a review, if like even 1% of everyone listened to this did it, it would really help skyrocket our viewership and help other people get this podcast. So if you like what we do and we've helped you in any way, if you could take two seconds, if you're on Spotify, you just search our podcast, you can just leave a star rating. If you're on iTunes, you can leave a star rating and do a little write up. We read every single one. It would mean the world. It'll take you probably two seconds. It'll make us smile. So if you can do that, we thank you so much. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next episode. Peace out.